This is your Weather Extreme video for Saturday, July the 29th. Wow, July is really winding down quickly here. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks so much for tuning in. There's a look at the uh, current radar just before I started this uh, presentation. And you can see most of the rain is over the south part of the state of Alabama. Satellite image, we show that uh, there's clear skies over parts of Tennessee. And we're gradually clearing across parts of Alabama. The cold front has moved into central Alabama. It's uh, oriented uh, basically along the I-20 corridor uh, at the time of this uh, presentation. The upper air pattern features a rather uh, strong trough for this time of year over the eastern part of the country, and that is helping to bring much drier air into our area. You can see the north wind certainly over Kentucky and uh, Tennessee and into the northern uh, half of Alabama. The drier air, however, is a little bit uh, behind the front. Uh, we're getting that wind shift along the front, and that's that's good, but the drier dew points are still back up into the northern part of Middle Tennessee. So it'll be a little bit later today before the drier air really gets here. The regional radar shows uh, most of the showers along that front as it uh, begins to sag down closer to the Gulf of Mexico. Watch warning map. We still have some heat advisories over Texas. There's a heat watch over parts of uh, uh, the states of Oregon and uh, Northern California and a couple of flash flood areas over uh, southern Mississippi, uh, one out in parts of Colorado and Kansas and uh, the Texas uh, and uh, Oklahoma panhandle and then over the mid-Atlantic states. The QPF chart sort of tells the story for the next five days. Uh, no uh, precipitation is expected and looks like probably our next chance for rain, a uh, really good chance anyway, is probably not going to come until Friday. Storm Prediction Center has a marginal risk of severe storms over the southeast U.S. coast and back along the eastern slopes of the Rockies. Day two, there is no marginal risk areas, just thunderstorms. And for day three, there's a small marginal risk over uh, the northern parts of North Dakota as well as uh, northwestern uh, Minnesota. Tropics, uh, the Atlantic Basin is once again really quiet, nothing expected for the next couple of days and out in the eastern north pacific we have hillary and Irwin. all right the 060 gfs model run this morning and there's that anomalous trough uh, and the uh, closed low over the mid-atlantic states that's uh, turning our flow aloft uh, to a northerly state and at the surface of course the front will be sagging down along the gulf coast uh, so best chances for rain in alabama are going to come across south alabama and down along the northwest florida coast for uh, sunday uh, that uh, trough continues to be uh, rather strong over the east coast, so that's keeping us in a good northeasterly flow. The front now down into the Gulf of Mexico as it moves out uh, there as continues to have that nice northerly push. And on the QPF, you can see that our values are way down compared to the near two-inch values we have for today. Uh, we basically have uh, much lower values on the order of between about one 1 and 1.2, 1.3 uh, inches. The trough remains in place along the east coast as it's gradually and slowly moving out into the Atlantic, and that does keep us in the relatively drier air. Uh, not much change, but the trough is beginning to wane a little bit on Tuesday, and uh, as it does, we see the um, it's a little bit of moisture coming back into the area, but still not enough for us to think much in the way of showers. Uh, the troughiness still there on Wednesday, so not a great deal of change as those traveling systems continue to move across southern Canada, and those help to reinforce the trough over the eastern part of the country. And once again, that keeps us in relatively dry air through uh, Wednesday. Uh, we do note that uh, that trough is probably going to be dragging, uh, or the, the strong trough moving across southern Canada is going to be dragging a weak front down into the mid-Mississippi River Valley. On Thursday, uh, the, uh, the troughiness, once again, still in place. And again, this is helping us because it's keeping us out of the excessive heat. We see that the front is still just to our north and northwest, so not much change going on there. Friday, uh, the, the trough begins to sharpen up just a little bit as these systems continue to drop into it uh, out of the southern part of Canada. And that should push the frontal zone down into our area. And as, uh, as it does that, of course, moisture levels will come back up. So it looks like probably Friday we see a chance for showers. Saturday, trough still in place as another 
um, impulse is coming into that trough and helping to sharpen it up. So that keeps that ridge well to our uh, west. Looking out into Voodoo Country, we see this uh, fairly sharp uh, closed low over the Great Eastern Great Lakes on Monday, the 7th of August. So once again, uh, no, no uh, sign of any kind of excessive heat. Uh, we see these troughs still uh, coming across the, the Canadian-U.S. Uh, border um, and that uh, having some influence on us, but this is the 10th of August and we're still under the trough. By the very end of the period, the 13th of August, we're showing signs of that ridge coming in across the entire uh, southern tier of the United States, so that would signal uh, possibly uh, a rise in our heat values. Well, that'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for this morning. James Spann is... Um, uh, pardon me. I uh, am filling in for James Spann for the next week or so. So we'll have another Weather Extreme video on Sunday. Have a great day and Godspeed.